Right, so um, everyone, welcome back to RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020. And today we have an uh, online classroom for Standard Platform. And today it will be Pepper version 2.9 Android. Um, yeah, together with us, also we have Luca as the main speaker. And also um, we have um, engineers from SoftBank. And today we will show you some example uh, regarding uh, your development with Android environment for your Pepper application. So as usual, so we have um, the Zoom link and the ID. So please um, share it. And later on, I will share uh, the attendance list in the group chat. So please uh, fill in uh, while I will pass uh, the mic to uh, Luca later on. And as a reminder, so please um, take care on your privacy. So if you have anything you want to ask, please uh, post it on the group chat. And please don't um, turn on your webcam throughout the whole session. OK, anything that you need to ask, please post on uh, in the group chat. Right. OK, so let's get started. Um, Luca, yeah. So I pass to you. OK, <laughs> thank you very much. And welcome, everybody. So today we will uh, focus uh, on uh, combining uh, chat interactions with robot actions. So chatbots uh, are very nice tools, uh, but uh, I believe, uh, and uh, not only me, of course, all the scientific community, that uh, when uh, you put a chatbot in a physical robot, uh, the user experience uh, uh, changes a lot. So uh, even if you have uh, uh, the best chatbot that can uh, let's say, uh, answer correctly to all the questions and blah, blah, blah. But uh, if you don't embody this chatbot uh, on the robot properly, the experience from the user point of view uh, will not be uh, as good as uh, uh, in other cases. So it's uh, very important uh, to uh, relate and uh, make sure that uh, <clears throat> what the robot says, for example, during the chat, uh, will also correspond uh, with uh, what the robot is doing. And this is very important because there's a difference with the software agent. So you can have chatbots in, on websites, so you can interact with chatbots uh, on your mobile phone, or you may have uh, Alexa or Google Home at home. And of course, uh, the, you have uh, some experience when you talk with these devices. But when you are facing a robot, especially a humanoid robot like Pepper, then your experience is completely different because you look at the robot, the robot has uh, eyes, has a face, it looks like a human. And so you're not thinking anymore to speak to a machine, but you tend to uh, impersonal, uh, to give personality to, to the robot. And so, for example, if you just take uh, uh, pepper standing without moving uh, while it speaks. Uh, this uh, will be very unnatural. Uh, while it's of course very natural that uh, your mobile phone, your smartphone, uh, does not move uh, while uh, uh, you speak with uh, with it. Uh, that's normal. While a humanoid robot with uh, eyes, uh, with the face, with the arms, uh, it's not natural that it's uh, uh, static uh, while. Uh, um, <coughs> talking. Uh, for example, if you talk to, uh, with a person uh, and you move a little bit, uh, uh, the person will probably move uh, his or her face towards you because it's uh, uh, giving a signal that uh, it is uh, giving uh, uh, attention to what you say. And you expect uh, that the robot, uh, a humanoid robot like Pepper, will do the same. So it's very important to relate uh, what the robot uh, does uh, uh, with what the robot says. And this is uh, the topic uh, of this lecture. So <clears throat> we will see uh, more specifically that, uh, so we have seen uh, in uh, uh, two lectures ago how to uh, generate uh, some actions. And we have seen in the last lecture how to uh, generate a chat and to write a chat topic. And today we focus uh, on the interaction between these two and in particular, uh, of course, there is a lot to, to say that we cannot do it in just one lecture, but we will focus on two elements that are important and they are powerful enough uh, to allow you to design interactions uh, uh, with the integration uh, of these two components uh, that are variables and bookmarks. 
So the focus today is to understand how through these uh, concepts of, or of bookmarks and variables, we can exchange uh, information from a chatbot uh, and the pepper code, and we can synchronize uh, this interaction. So <laughs> we already have seen an example of a variable in the last lecture, and now we'll uh, see uh, more in detail. So uh, when uh, you define a variable in uh, the chatbot uh, topic, <coughs> you can access to this variable uh, uh, into the Java code uh, in order to have uh, the robot make some reaction. And there are actually uh, two ways of doing. Uh, one is uh, in a synchronous way by adding a listener to the change of the value. So when you write this piece of code here, uh, the meaning uh, is that uh, whenever the value of the variable changes, uh, so whenever during the chat, uh, this variable, for example, is assigned, then this piece of code will be executed. And another possibility to access variables is to use the two methods get value and set value. And this is done in an asynchronous way. So it means that at any time in your code, in your Java code, you want to read, for example, the value of this variable, or you want to write to put something in this variable, then you can use uh, uh, these two statements. So the first one, uh, name variable dot get value, will return a string that contains uh, the information that is currently assigned to the variable while the set value will do the opposite. So this is uh, a <coughs> first way of uh, interacting, uh, and uh, we have seen uh, already an example, uh, and uh, I will show you again uh, uh, this example uh, here that was used uh, in the uh, previous lecture to, it was used in the previous lecture to uh, give a name to the person who is interacting with the robot. So you remember the example in which uh, uh, the robot uh, at some point uh, would ask uh, what is your name <coughs> to the user and uh, when the user answer uh, with his or her name, uh, the robot will uh, greet the user by using his or her name. So this. Uh, variable dollar one uh, as the meaning of collecting the word that has been uh, mentioned by the uh, by the user to the robot but also at the same time we memorize we store this information so the actual name of the person in this variable so the variable in the chat uh, topic is denoted with the dollar symbol before the name of the variable so this uh, syntax dollar name refers to a variable whose name is name. And uh, you remember that uh, we used this variable in the code here to <coughs> uh, implement this behavior that uh, you can find uh, uh, in this section. So we first, uh, gain access uh, to this variable and we define uh, a, a Java uh, entry for uh, this variable in this way. And here you have to match the name of the variable with uh, uh, what you write uh, here. And then uh, with this uh, name variable uh, pointer, we can uh, add to this uh, uh, name variable, to this chat variable, a uh, listener that will uh, run, will uh, execute uh, as soon as uh, the value is changed. So this means that uh, <clears throat> whenever we reach uh, this uh, rule in the chat topic, uh, in the dialogue, then uh, this uh, code uh, is triggered. And in this case, uh, what we saw is that uh, uh, we just, uh, uh, you remember, changed the name, uh, the, the string that was uh, on the uh, screen by adding the actual value 
that uh, is contained in the variable. So this means that uh, <coughs> we compose uh, here a string with hello uh, followed by the name of the user that has been spoken. And uh, you have seen here appearing uh, uh, something like uh, hello and then uh, the name of the user. Okay, so this is uh, a first uh, way of uh, <coughs> um, communicating between uh, the chat and uh, the Java code and to synchronize action. So uh, when you tell the robot what's your name, you will see your name appearing in the screen. Of course, this is a very interesting behavior that would, for example, uh, uh, give uh, a very nice feeling to the user because uh, it will uh, give uh, um, a feedback from the robot to the user that the robot really understood uh, your name. And so you uh, will be probably invited to continue the conversation because you feel that the robot is really taking attention to you. So it's really giving uh, uh, your attention, his, his attention to you. And so you will uh, uh, decide to continue the conversation. One, problem in general in human-robot interaction for the robot is to keep the users involved, uh, engaged in the interaction. Okay, so uh, I will run uh, all this code in a while, but before that, uh, let's add uh, another component that is also interesting, that is uh, this uh, bookmarks. So bookmarks are uh, different from uh, uh, variables, the uh, fact that uh, the dialogue reached a particular state. So while variables contain uh, uh, values, uh, and for example, the variable name contains the name of the person who is interacting with the uh, robot, here bookmarks are different <coughs> uh, elements of the chat that uh, denotes that the conversation reached that point. This uh, of uh, uh, chat in the chatbot that was uh, commented yesterday, uh, sorry, in the last lecture. But now I added these two bookmarks. And so the bookmark is denoted with this uh, percentage uh, symbol before uh, the name of the bookmark. And so here we have added these two bookmarks. One, when we reach the, the execution of this rule. So this means that when the user answers uh, on the robot question, how are you? with a, a concept that is uh, meaning that the user is fate, but it will also reach the bookmark that we call feel good. So in a sense, now the robot knows that the user feels good. While if uh, the user answers uh, one of the uh, uh, answers that uh, will say, oh, I'm sorry, but it will also uh, reach uh, this bookmark that we call uh, feel bad. So <clears throat> what can we do? Now that we have uh, uh, these bookmarks, uh, we can go to the code. So now what you see here in the second part of the slide is what is expected to be uh, written in the Java code. And uh, it's uh, uh, similar to the uh, variables, but uh, it's uh, in a way simpler because uh, we just uh, uh, access uh, uh, a, um, a bookmark. So we just uh, uh, check if this, so the idea is that you put uh, some code that you see in this uh, portion of the slide, that uh, is again a listener. So it's a piece of code that is uh, activated whenever a bookmark is reached. Simple piece of code, just making a selection that says, uh, if we reach the bookmark feels good, then we will do something uh, that, is, that will be written here. Otherwise, uh, if we reach the bookmark uh, feel bad, uh, we will do something else uh, that is written here. Okay, so in this way, of course, you can have uh, as many uh, bookmarks uh, as you want uh, in your dialogue. Uh, and whenever you want the robot to do something, uh, in addition, of course, uh, to uh, continue in the chat, so here the chat uh, is going on, but uh, in parallel, uh, the robot can do also something else. So what we will see as an example is uh, <coughs> the robot running some animations that, of course, are different when uh, uh, depending on the <coughs> uh, status uh, of the uh, chat. So uh, we have seen uh, a few lectures uh, ago how to create uh, animation actions. Remember the example of the gorilla. There are many other animations and there are animations uh, related to emotions, both positive and negative. 
So uh, what I will show in a while is that uh, I, as I created an animation action one for a, a behavior that is good to show for the robot when, uh, let's say, the user feels good, and another animation that is good in situations when the user uh, feels uh, uh, bad. And uh, here, what you can see is the implementation of this uh, concept here, where now, in, uh, when the bookmarks are reached, I will just uh, run either animation one or animation two. So what's the meaning of this uh, little uh, bit of code is that uh, whenever we reach the bookmark feel good, then this animation is run, or when we reach the bookmark feel bad, then this other animation will run. I will show you in a while uh, the full code of it. Just let me mention that uh, <coughs> we are not showing this uh, in this lecture, but of course uh, there is uh, there is more information available. We will show you some pointers later on. And the bookmarks can be used also in the other direction. So from the code to the dialogue to uh, push the robot to move into a particular section of the dialogue. So there are situations in which uh, you want, uh, given to something that happens uh, uh, during the uh, interaction, you want uh, to force uh, the uh, dialogue uh, to go into a particular uh, uh, section of the dialogue, and bookmarks uh, can be used also for uh, this other uh, um, functionality, which is a little bit more complex, so we are not covering this uh, here in this lecture, but uh, this may be useful uh, to uh, relate uh, the evolution of the chat uh, according to what's happening uh, uh, with the robot. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see this example. So here you see uh, the bookmarks in the first uh, portion uh, of the proposal. So you remember from last uh, uh, lecture that uh, the main rule uh, associated to the hello concept, uh, which is this one here, is specifying that whenever the user says hello, the robot says something that is within the concept hello, the robot answers something within the concept hello, and then it uh, goes uh, for the next proposal. And here in this example, we have three proposals, one in which the robot asks, uh, how are you? And this is the uh, portion of the, <coughs> of the dialogue. Then the robot says, uh, in the next proposal, it says, what is your name? And in the third proposal, it says, uh, would you like to do some drink? And uh, so here, what we added in the first proposal are two bookmarks. So again, you recognize bookmarks from the percentage symbol in front of the name of the bookmark, while, uh, as I mentioned before, the dollar symbol is used for variables. <clears throat> and uh, in the code, uh, we added uh, this uh, uh, piece of code. So first of all, uh, we created uh, two, we defined two animate actions. One we call it a good anim and the other one will, is bad anim. We create these actions in, uh, as animations uh, in a similar way as uh, we have seen uh, previously. And uh, before that, uh, you remember that uh, you have to load uh, to import uh, a new animation. You can do it here from the import animation button. If you go here, there are many. Among them, you can find among the emotion uh, some uh, negative emotions. You see a bunch of them here and positive ones. Okay, so what I did here, I choose uh, one uh, positive uh, emotion uh, animation uh, that is associated with the good uh, mood of the user and one negative uh, that is associated with bad. Of course, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you can uh, do much more and it's up, just up to you. Uh, this is just an example. So once we have uh, the actions uh, animation, we have added this uh, as uh, a portion of the listener 
when the bookmark is reached. <coughs> and so very simply here, what you can see is that uh, when the bookmark feel good uh, is reached, then uh, the robot runs uh, the good animation action that correspond to the, uh, this particular animation here. Okay, while uh, when the feel bad uh, bookmark is reached, uh, the robot will run the bad animation action that correspond to this uh, other interaction here. Okay, so <coughs> let's see the example of execution. And when you do this, uh, uh, it's very useful uh, the functionality that you, you can uh, drag. So you see here in this window, the robot viewer window, that uh, you have these uh, four views. But uh, in this uh, example, when you want to see at the same time the robot and uh, the dialogue, uh, you can drag uh, this window here. So if you click uh, on this bar and you drag this window outside, what you will have is that you can see at the same time uh, the dialogue view and the robot view. So can, you can uh, appreciate, for example, uh, the robot moving uh, while doing something else. Okay, so this is a very uh, convenient uh, uh, way of uh, testing uh, dialogues. Okay, so let's run uh, this application and uh, I'll show you the behavior <coughs> that it's implemented. Okay, so here we have uh, the screen of the tablet. Uh, I will comment later on about this image. Now for the moment, uh, let's see. Uh, the dialogue is running, so we can say hi, and the robot say, how are you? And now we are in this uh, portion of the dialogue, uh, and uh, we can uh, answer with the, something from the feel good concept or something from the feel bad. They, very well. <coughs> now you see that uh, in addition to the robot saying great, uh, you have seen uh, the animation. So the robot was doing this uh, movement uh, to express happiness. And this is very important uh, when you tell a robot I'm very well, very well. This is of course enforce your uh, uh, perception of how the uh, robot is really understanding you. And of course, it's not the same if the robot just say great. Because great, uh, yes, it's of course uh, an important uh, uh, word to say in this moment, but the fact that the robot moves uh, with uh, an attitude, uh, the understanding of the user that the robot is uh, really uh, caring about this interaction. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and then we say hello and the robot say, what's your name? And here we reply with our name. Uh, you remember that uh, you see now Again, uh, the other feature in which uh, the name is uh, <coughs> known by in the uh, screen. And uh, when we uh, say hello, when we, when we greet the robot, and we say bye, the robot uh, answers goodbye in the car. <coughs> okay, we can uh, repeat this again. Let's start again the interaction. And uh, now we show uh, what happens if we say uh, we are not very well and bad? You see the robot is doing a, a different one associated to the fact that the robot is said that we said uh, <coughs> uh, that we are not uh, good. So uh, this is very important because uh, it's, uh, well, now you don't listen to the robot, but uh, you imagine when this uh, is uh, uh, implemented on a physical robot, and it's very important that the words hear of the robot. Imagine if the robot say, I'm sorry, and uh, it makes a joyful uh, expression uh, that would not, uh, you would not understand. Uh, is the robot uh, making jokes of you? Why, why the robot say, I'm, jo I'm sorry, and then it, sh it looks like happy, okay? So it's very important uh, to have uh, this kind of interaction between the chat and uh, what the robot is doing. A robot, especially a humanoid robot, we really expect uh, that during the interaction, uh, the uh, words uh, that are spoken, so whatever you write in the chatbot, uh, should really correspond to what the robot is uh, physically doing. And it will be very unnatural if the robot is just is talking with you. 
Okay, I, I think I can go ahead. I have another uh, uh, topic, uh, and then we can I can collect the question question uh, later on. So the next topic, uh, sorry, that's not the window I want to show. Yes, here it is. Uh, the next topic uh, is to uh, start uh, feeling a little bit more the uh, tablet. Now we have just uh, Hello World, but uh, we can put more because, of course, uh, we want to reach also the ability of the robot to, to uh, use the tablet. The tablet is very important because, uh, of course, can contain uh, many information and can send messages through the... <coughs> and it's very important, uh, indeed, that uh, this information uh, are meaningful with respect to the interaction. So, uh, first of all, we can add images to uh, the uh, tablet GUI, so not only text. And here you see an example in which I added the logo of uh, our university. And uh, for your team, I'm pretty sure that uh, you want to add some logo of your team, of your school, uh, whatever you want. So, this is just a very simple example that uh, easily by uh, so selecting first of all this uh, activity main.xml and you remember there are three views, one in which you see only the XML file, one uh, you select the views here, one in which you see at the same time uh, the XML and uh, uh, preview of the layout <coughs> and this other one uh, in which you see uh, only the layout. So here there are many graphical uh, elements that you can add uh, in uh, your uh, uh, interface, uh, we will uh, see in the next lecture also, for example, buttons that can be used uh, uh, to interact, so to, for the user to provide input to the robot. And of course, uh, you can add uh, uh, images. And this is the image view. So you can uh, add an image view and uh, you can add uh, so tutorials. So this is uh, uh, not specific of uh, any of Pepper, this is just standard Android development. And also, uh, what uh, you may want to do is to load uh, some images in your project. So here uh, I have uh, some images that have been loaded uh, in this section. Of the, uh, so in uh, your application resources, so app, res, and drawable. And uh, you can load images here. To load images, you just to drag uh, from uh, your file system. Or you can load it uh, with, uh, uh, by adding a new uh, files with the new. Okay, <laughs> but um, what uh, we are uh, more interested in this lecture is uh, not only to uh, generate uh, a static layout with images, so here it will be very easy to add uh, additional elements, but uh, it is also important that uh, we uh, learn how to change images uh, during the execution of the code. Okay, so again, I uh, will not cover too much the uh, graphical uh, layout of your um, tablet. This is standard Android stuff. You can do whatever you want uh, in order to make this uh, screen uh, nice. But uh, what is uh, now more important for us uh, is to understand uh, how the same uh, during the execution of the code. So uh, in order to do this, uh, as we have seen an example for the text view in which we have changed, you remember, uh, the name of the text here for hello world to hello and the username, we will see now how to dynamically change images. So first of all, we need uh, to uh, gather having the uh, GUI on the tablet, uh, the identifier, that is uh, this uh, symbol here uh, that is uh, labeled with Android ID. And uh, with this identifier, we can go to the code, to the Java code, and uh, uh, get a reference to this element of the GUI. So this is this name, image view one, that correspond to this uh, name here, is used in the Java code to get, uh, I've done the same with the text view. So in this way, the text view uh, variable in Java code uh, is a reference to the text uh, in, the, um, in the Android GUI. So this variable is referencing this uh, graphical element on the GUI. And now we add the, the image view that is uh, now referencing this other uh, element in the GUI while text view is a text, while image view. So this is the way to access uh, this uh, element. And now, how do we change it? We have seen that uh, <coughs> for uh, uh, changing the text, so for changing this element, uh, we have to pass a string. And so this is the case when uh, I compose the string, hello, Luca, for example, so hello and the username. And then I call uh, this function with the string, hello, Luca, and this uh, set text 
applied to text view and with this value we'll change the value so this is uh, how we actually change this label here now if we want to change the image here we have to do something else because an image is not a string so <laughs> what we will do and i will show you in a while is uh, to start from the reference of the image view okay uh, remember image view is the reference to this uh, element uh, to this resource uh, in the GUI and then uh, this time we use uh, the method that is called set image resource and the set image resource uh, as uh, so what you will do here is to load the images uh, that you want uh, to use uh, in your application as a drawable uh, in the resource folder of your application and then here you select which one you want to show so uh, it's an image of a cook and this uh, action here will show the image of a cook uh, replacing the logo of sapienza university so how do we use this well of course we want to relate other variable and now we are using the third proposal in our chat and the third proposal is a question from the robot to the user would you like some drink and there were many options and so we memorize in a new variable now we have a new variable that is called drink and we memorize the answer of the user so if the user says coke then variable drink if the user say wine then wine is stored now this we don't store beer because in this dialogue uh, the robot uh, replied that uh, there is no beers available there are no beers and so uh, in this case i decide to draw a beer while uh, it says uh, I, I don't have any beer okay of course you can do it i mean you can add also uh, brc but uh, it's important also uh, what is the message so if the robot say yes i have a coke green this is what you would expect because you expect the robot that you understood that you want a coke and it shows you a coke well uh, i would consider very weird if uh, i ask for a beer the robot says i don't have a beer but uh, it shows uh, a beer on the screen that would be in my opinion confused anyway that's up to you of course so uh, what we have here a variable drink that uh, takes the value coke whenever the user say uh, yes uh, i want a coke and uh, uh, the same variable drink takes value wine when uh, the user answer that uh, you would like some wine now as we have done for the name variable in the code uh, we added an additional uh, listener now on the drink variable the same uh, as before for the name variable but now it uh, the behavior is changed so you remember the name variable was associated to a listener that uh, would set the text view to the value that is specified with the username well now the drink uh, a variable whenever this variable is changed it will uh, set this time the value of the image okay so you see that here uh, associated to the listener for the name variable we have this uh, text view set value that will uh, set the value of the text view uh, reference while here when the value of the drink variable changes we will set and if we go here to this uh, image view set value function we can see uh, what is the behavior it's very simple if uh, here we have the value of the variable if the value of the variable is coke then uh, we will show the image of the value of the variable is wine we will show the image of wine okay so let's see this uh, execution of this uh, task okay we can continue this interaction and we say again hi what's your name my name is Luca. Now I write just the name because I want to make it short. Okay, let's uh, uh, greet uh, the robot again. Okay, now we are in the phase in which the robot is asking, uh, "Would you like some drink?" Uh, let's start with the beer. And you remember that uh, the robot answer, "Sorry, I do not have beer," but it's still uh, waiting for uh, uh, your answer. And now, if we uh, ask for a coke. Uh, we will have uh, <coughs> the coke and this image appears uh, on the tablet of the robot okay <coughs> you see again this is a, a very nice feedback and uh, imagine you are thirsty and the, the robot shows a very nice picture of a coke well of course uh, this willing of uh, getting the coke okay so it will increase uh, your 
<coughs> experience uh, uh, of interaction with the robot, uh, and uh, you consider probably this interaction uh, more suitable. Uh, let me start this again. I want to show you the example of once. <coughs> Of course, uh, you can create a better interface uh, that can keep the robot asking uh, questions and you don't need to restart every time. But uh, here, uh, in order to simplify this example, uh, I did it in this way. So again, how are you? Uh, good. The robot uh, is happy. And then we can uh, read the robot again. And uh, my name is always Luca. And then uh, finally, we can choose uh, some wine. And you see now that, uh, <clears throat> again, that's very interesting uh, uh, behavior. The robot it says, uh, do you prefer red or white wine? And you see here an image in which uh, there are two uh, options. So again, uh, uh, this image matches with the concept. The concept in, in this case, uh, the robot is not saying, uh, yes, I have wine, but it's asking uh, which one uh, would you prefer? And so in this case, uh, uh, this image, uh, of course, uh, matches uh, with the concept uh, that the robot is asking uh, if you prefer white or red, okay? Now, I don't have this uh, other, but uh, probably would be fine that uh, if uh, you answer red to this question, okay, now maybe, it would be more uh, convenient uh, to show only red wine. For example, now uh, this demo, uh, in my opinion, is not uh, good enough yet because uh, uh, you answer that you want red wine, but this image uh, did not change. So uh, the user may have some feeling that the robot did not understand the, the answer. So, um, I'm asking myself why the robot is not showing only red wine at this point uh, since uh, I have answered that I want red wine. So this means that uh, <clears throat> would be, and this is something that you can certainly do as an exercise, uh, that you can add, uh, for example, here, uh, uh, another value of the drink. For example, I would add something like uh, uh, red wine if we reach this state or white wine if we reach this other state. And then you have to load here some additional images, one for some white wines and one for some red wine. And add here uh, other two cases. So if the value is uh, red wine, then you will show an image of red wine. If the value is uh, white wine, then you will show an image of white wine. Okay, so this is uh, an example of uh, exercise uh, that uh, you can do in order to improve uh, this, uh, <coughs> um, this interaction. You will find that this code in the um, GitHub uh, repository, the RC Home Edu Learn Pepper, and this is the basic chatbot. You find uh, this uh, code and uh, also the, uh, the GUI code and the chat uh, without the images. So you have to download the images. Of course, you can change the names of the images. And if you change the names of the images, you just have to uh, change uh, the name here. So uh, in the repository, you find the code, but not the resources. So you can grab uh, your favorite images of a Coke or white wine or whatever you want, and uh, just make sure that uh, the, what you write here matches uh, the name of the resource that you put here in the drawable. Okay, so that's it for the first part of this uh, lecture uh, today. And so, uh, sorry again, this is so wrong. <clears throat> so we have seen how to uh, modify some elements uh, in the GUI. And now, uh, before uh, we go on uh, with the second part, uh, let me see if there are questions uh, that I have to answer. Or uh, if anybody from uh, also Softbank wants to add uh, additional uh, information about uh, what I was 
just mentioning. Hello. Uh, yes, I can add a bit yes. more um, explanations of sure, on the general you. usage of KeyChat and code. Um, since, um, like, um, one of the main purposes of this is, as you shown in the first slides, is to separate the kind of business logic, which should ideally be more in your code, from the anything related to language. Uh, the reason is that language is very messy and complicated. Like, you have a lot of different ways of saying things, of asking questions, etc. Sometimes you ask for clarifications, sometimes there's some nuance in the way to ask a question or to give an answer. Uh, but all that complexity is, well, it's a bit of a mess. That's why we have KeyChat as a dedicated language to handle it. But we want, you want to keep this outside of your actual application code as much as possible so that it maintains, stays maintainable. So this is more of like software, software engineering best practices, separation of concerns and things like that. Uh, but it's a way of making an application that you can that can reliably work for a long time and that you can still evolve to build something more complicated than a simple demo. That's yeah, be, uh, and a bit of a in fact, background. I think that the students can appreciate that even with the very few lines of code uh, and even maybe without understanding exactly all the syntax and the semantics of the code, uh, you are running uh, quite complex uh, uh, behavior that would not be possible at all uh, to do it. Uh, without this uh, uh, architecture. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, of course, there is a, a lot more to learn. Uh, and, yes, and also, what, maybe one small thing, but uh, it can be a useful tip for debugging dialogue, even if you're mainly doing a dialogue interaction, uh, using the variable just for debugging. Like, you can have all your variables just show their current value on the tablet, and this can make you gain a lot of time in understanding sure. what the robot Definitely. is doing internally. Thank you. That's all I had to add. So, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, someone to take over. Uh, so I will uh, quit the sharing my screen now, and uh, I would like, I don't know if Emil or Louis Gabriel can uh, take uh, share your own screen. And so in the second part, you will see this uh, full example of interact additional details uh, about uh, the development. I will remain connected for the second part, but I also have a topic, so I may not be able to, like, to give uh, uh, this uh, to some of you, so I will stop you to uh, take over from now. Uh, and Gabriel, I will take over for this uh, next slide. All right, so I... Do you hear me well? Thank you, Luca. And I hope you can yes, hear me, yes. um, uh, the rest of you. Yes, I switch on. Right, so I guess uh, we will continue. Um, I think... Uh, okay, so even are you going to share your screen or you want to use uh, my, my slide? Um, do you hear me? Yes, uh, we can, I can. Okay. Perfect. I mean, yes, so I'm going can, to share, share my screen. screen. Yes, I think oh, sharing okay. yours is better okay. because you want to do the demo as well. Yes. So let's right. do this. Okay. So please share your screen. Yeah. Here it is. Okay. Okay. So there, this is the this slide that we, we reached. So um, I'm going to mail shoe store app. That was developed uh, uh, at SoftBank. Um, it um, displays uh, some um, uh, buy shoes, uh, return products, or um, pick up some uh, purchased uh, items. And after that, I will show you a demo through the, the emulator, uh, as you, you would uh, see it if you would uh, run it on uh, over Android Studio uh, without uh, Pepper Robot. So let's Shoes, picking up your online order or returning item. I would like to start shopping with you. All right. Thanks to my agent, gender analysis capabilities, I have selected these four shoes for you. Is this what you are looking for? No. Okay, then please select another product from below. I would like to see woman dress shoes. Got it. Classic shoes for a woman. Are these okay? Yes, it is. Okay. Please select your shoe size and tell me what color you would prefer. Can you show them in red on size 42? Okay, I selected the size 42. Now please tell me what color do you prefer? In red, please. All right, here they are in red and size 42. Would you like to buy them? Yes, of course. Perfect. Because you are shopping with me, you can get these matching socks for 50% off. Would you like to add them to your cart? Yes, please add them. Perfect, I added them. We are getting these items ready for you. Just go to the desk right over there so that my 
the human colony can help you. Thank you. Sure. Could you give me some feedback? It was perfect. Thank you for your feedback. Have fun. Goodbye. So as you could see, you could see the live uh, interaction with the robot. And uh, now I'm going to show you the, um, the view through uh, playing it through Android Studio. So here I've got, I've got my Android emulator, the robot view, and there below the dialog view. Okay, the, the tab to where I can type some input and I'll see the uh, answers from the robot. So let's start the project. This is uh, Gravel building the starting. Let's wait it to start. Installing. And oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I made the, the wrong window. I had to Android Studio uh, running. Excuse me. Uh, let's restart this. My mistake. Sorry, sorry. There we are. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Luis, is everything okay? Please.
Luis, are you still there? I think he, I think he has a problem of connection because uh, we don't see okay. we don't see his screen anymore. Yes, um, he will, he will probably screen. come back. Okay. I tried to chat with him. All right. So maybe uh, let me let me answer some question while waiting for Luis to be back. So um, uh, I, I saw a question regarding the competition. So for the competition, uh, because we plan this uh, class. Uh, is in order for new beginner team to learn how to start development and so on. And um, we will mention and also we will discuss more about the competition preparation uh, in the last class, which is next week. So we will tell you roughly like after you have learned all these things, so how are you going to uh, develop based on whatever that you have learned uh, uh, in order to solve the competition task or you can come up with your own scenario and so on. So. We will discuss more about this um, competition preparation uh, in the last class, which is next week. So um, I hope you can attend next week and, and we will discuss more on the competition uh, side. But for, for today and also next, maybe the first half of next class, we still focus on the development so that you can learn more in order for you to prepare. And regarding the number of teams, currently we have, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, 20 plus teams. Uh, register, but I I I quite sure that um after this we will have more because um we still open the application so maybe many teams still haven't decide uh, the details so they haven't signed up but currently we have twenty plus almost thirty teams so it's quite a good number for the competition so I hope I I, I answer your question and um next week we will we will talk more about the preparation. For the current moment, if you want to know about the details, we actually have put up all the details about the competition on the website. So please go to uh, the competition main page. Uh, I'll put a link after this. Uh, you can read and also we have the video on the first uh, class, which is uh, the introduction. Uh, during the introduction, we actually mentioned a lot about how the competition, uh, how you, how the whole process and what you're supposed to prepare and how the timeline and so on. So maybe you can refer back to the first uh, class videos and also the, the materials for more information on our competition. But specifically for Pepper 2.9, uh, we will tell you more in the next class about how to prepare uh, yourself for the competition. All right, so let me put um, the link for you. Okay, so I just um, sent in the group chat uh, the page for the competition so you can get more information over there uh, well, regarding the timeline and also the, the process, okay, the procedure and so on. And also we have the rule books over there if you are interested on solving the competition tasks, I mean uh, rule book for, for rules 2020 tasks. So there's the first team, so if you plan for that, so you can refer to the rule books to know more about what kind of scenario uh, you can set up in order for your paper uh, development. Okay, so that, that is uh, something you can. And I will advise everyone to please sign up for the competition entry. So your entry application is very important for us to estimate um, how many teams uh, for us to prepare uh, in order for us to support you. And also we have a lot of competition related um, information that uh, we will first send uh, our email to all the teams that sign up. So if you want to get the first, um, you want to, you want to, if you want to get the information, the first hand information, please sign up uh, for the competition. Yeah. Okay. So while waiting for Luis to come back, I have another one important announcement that I would like to do it here. Okay, so let me let me get this.
So I put up a link to, uh, uh, maybe you can see this survey. Maybe like this is better. Okay, so everyone can see. So uh, I put up a survey form uh, in the group chat and I appreciate everyone can please go through the form and please put in your feedback to our classes because after uh, we will we will do our last class actually next week. So after that, we actually have a new planning uh, to have different kind of um, online classroom. So we will have invited lectures and so on. But um, in order to organize it in the way that more suit your need, uh, particularly, for example, your timing and also the topics that you're interested in, uh, we would like to hear more uh, from you. So please um, take some time while we are still waiting for Luis to come back with the system. Uh, please look at the form and uh, tell us more about your experience or your feeling or anything that um, your comment, suggestion, and put in the form so that we can um, organize a uh, better online classroom after this. Right. Hello. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, hello? Yes, email. In the meanwhile, I can present a bit, uh, I don't know if we get ready to make it back, uh, a bit more documentation. Just in addition to everything that uh, Luca has presented in this course, you might want to check out some additional material. Uh, there's a lesson called Linking KeyChat and Code uh, on Developer Center uh, that contains um, well, a lot of what was covered here in a bit more detail. Um, it's written in Kotlin, not in Java, but the concepts are similar, uh, just the syntax changes a bit. And everything in the KeyChat side is the same. And there's a bit more explanation on how everything works. So if you want to read over, that's a good placing point. You can also check all the KeyChat resources on this link. So it's actually, uh, if you want to check this, uh, it will bring again on Developer Center, our website, uh, a lot more materials on uh, things related to KeyChat. So now that you have the base of the syntax, as well as the, the linking KeyChat and code, uh, you can, you should be able to understand most of that if necessary, or see which one of those are useful for your project. Um, in addition to code, you might want to look at sample, uh, sorry, in addition to documentation, you might want to look at sample code. Uh, so of course there's the RoboCup edu uh, that uh, Luca shared earlier on the website, but uh, there's also some on our GitHub uh, projects. So you have um, uh, the key SDK tutorials here. These are, this is actually a code repo that corresponds to a lot of the tutorials used in uh, the documentation. Um, so it's a fairly big project. It contains a bit of everything, all the tutorials together, uh, but it's written in Java and has a lot of examples and you can also try running it on your own on emulator and see which one of those work. Uh, but also, if you want more examples of codes, there are a lot, uh, a lot in there. Uh, that's mostly it for the documentation part. I think for the assignments next time, uh, this was maybe more for Jeffrey and Luca. Uh, but the idea is to yeah, keep working on your project um, and adding things. Uh, we had some discussion on how to deliver this in the end on GitHub. Uh, so currently the idea would be that you, for the final uh, project submission, you would be push, putting this on the shared uh, GitHub uh, project that you all have. And from there we will retrieve it and this is on real robots. Um, the, um, an important part of the submission, so first is how to submit it and also uh, to be sure to include the readme that explains, so here's an example, but uh, the important thing to explain is for whoever will be testing the project is to explain what it's supposed to do and how it works. So for example, you're supposed to launch it. If you need to press a button to do anything, which you shouldn't, uh, which one to press, and if you need to say some things, what should you be able to say? Either in like a, in a scenario, like it's shown here, or as a list of things you could say. Uh, this is the important part, so we don't want people getting the project and trying to figure out how it works by having to look at the code, et cetera. And this, by the way, uh, giving a basic explanation of how your project works is a good way to force yourself to make a project that is easy to test and easy to use, which is very important. Uh, 
that's about it. Jeffrey, do you have anything to add? Luca seems to have, uh, sorry, um, uh, Louis Gabriel seems to have computer problems. So okay, so. Let's end the video afterwards. Okay, so um, I can continue from there since we have some time, so I'm waiting for, for, for Luis. So we can, um, maybe you, yeah, right. So just put on that page is fine. Okay, so we actually have an um, assignment uh, in all the, like, right. So let, let me put up the screen. Okay, um, uh, put up the screen. Okay, let me say, share my screen um, to tell you more about the thing. Right, so I hope you see my screen now. Okay, so um, if you head to the homepage, so this is uh, the page for our competition. So we have all the explanations here, these are all the timing, and so you just come to this how to participate. So um, I would like to call upon everyone to please um, fill in the online entry form so that we know who are interested so that we can support you better uh, in terms of the competitions. Uh, and you're supposed to submit a technical video challenge uh, for your qualifications to the final. And over here, uh, the, the content or how you want to produce this video uh, is based on several teams you can choose. So the first team is uh, solving the task, the competition task in the rule 2020. So over here, you can click out uh, the rules, the rule book you can read, which is the uh, similar at home competition um, task that we have um, selected actually before this for our challenge in, in 2020 initially. But now we put everything into online. So these rules and these tasks become the team for us, for the team to prepare for the video. So you will submit the video uh, based on this. But um, when you look at the rules, maybe you can see like there are many things that you know, the robot is supposed to do. So don't worry about that. What you need to do is like take this thing as uh, your scenario or your problem. So you can refer, we actually have three, three types of um, teams. So the first one is solving the competition task. The second one is the open scenario, which is you can define your scenario. Or the third one is uh, more for the current um, situation, which is uh, if you have any good idea about uh, service robot application to address the current COVID-19 pandemic situation. So that is uh, something that we encourage to see uh, what people can do. So now come back to this um, Pepper 2.9 development. So throughout these few classes that you have attended, so uh, we share you how you can develop uh, using um, Android to develop um, Pepper 2.9. So you can start to, based on this team, uh, figure out some application that you want to do. For example, later on, Luis will show you uh, a demo on the shoe retail shops. So how you want to uh, interact with robots and, and how the robots are able to support you. Right, so that is one, one kind of uh, example application. But now in terms of competition, so what you need to do is you need to figure out uh, an idea or one scenario that you think you can leverage all the tools that you have and also leverage the functionality of Pepper uh, in order to showcase uh, the capability of robots to assist in this um, scenario. For example, like you have a, a, a scenario in school or in hospital or at home uh, with, uh, to, to address a particular problem based on your team. Then how you want to use the things that you learn in this class uh, in order to develop a robot application that can address this problem. And you are going to showcase to us all these things in a, in a, in a storytelling way. So it's, it's very similar, like uh, you try to come up with a scenario, then you are going to um, demonstrate your robot uh, performance uh, by interacting with some user. So inside the video, so that is what you need. But on top of that, you also need to produce the technical features, I mean like the technical document to explain. And also in your video, we also recommend you to do some explanation in terms of uh, the technical uh, aspect of your development. So basically that is the idea how you can, um, uh, what kind of contents you need to uh, produce for this technical video challenge. And based on this um, development, uh, based on your, your submission, so we will select and if any teams that, that 
did a good job. I mean, like if you, if you do a good job and you presented a very nice video explaining a very nice uh, application, you'll be invited to the final, which is uh, we will do it uh, supposed RoboCup week that will invite you to do the presentation live. So it's very similar like now, we do it through uh, well, Zoom. So we will do it in this online way, in a remote way. So you are going to show us, uh, you're going to present uh, your, your content. Uh, whether you want to do something exactly the same in a video or you want to add something more, it, it's fine, right? So the, we, will, we will see your performance uh, in a live online uh, channel, right? So you, we, we will do it live uh, during the RoboCup week. So that is the final. So yeah, everything is written here. So these are all the, some um, important dates that you can uh, catch up. Uh, so we are going to run the, the rest of the uh, procedure, follow this uh, timeline. Okay. And also for teams that are not able to access to, to, to hardware, robot hardware, for example, like you don't have a robot currently at home, or your robot is in your labs and you're not able to access, or even you don't even have a pepper robots, okay? Um, but you're still able to join this competition uh, because we have um, what we call the, the robot development support from, from our sponsor. So SoftBank is um, very generous to help us in this, where you can submit uh, your code and everything to them and they might review it. If let's say you are doing a good job, for example, I like just now email have said, that you can submit your work and for them to review. And if let's say your application is really good and they would like to help you to execute your code on the robot and also to produce the video for you. And that is something that um, we can work out together. So in that sense, you can actually uh, do your development with uh, the Android Studio. Uh, you can do all your development at home. Then you just need to submit uh, the code that you have done according to the way that email just said, and then uh, just follow the submission um, procedure. So you can read out the details uh, later on in, in the submission, but uh, what you need to submit and when you need to submit and so on. Then we will do the review and if it's okay, then SoftBank will help you to run your code uh, on paper and produce the video for you in order for your video's challenge submission. Right, so, okay. I would like to know, like, Luis, are you okay? At least I, I need to have some idea, like, what happened over there. Is, uh, my Android Studio crashed my laptop or some other... Uh, uh, it's not working? Uh, I, can, um, I can present it now, it's working. If okay. uh, time, or otherwise I'll, I can put it through a video. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. As you so you can, you can show any things that, that can explain the things that you want to say. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, okay. All right. So okay, you, no, I, can, I share my screen again? Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll stop, then you can, you can share. All right. So you can share now. Fine. Here we are. So um, there it's running. I won't stop it. I just press the play button. You've got the robot viewer, the dialog viewer, and here the tablet emulator. So we start the app. There is a email credential. We are not going to use that. There, I just uh, I've got the the entry point. Uh, there you can you have several options. You can start shopping. Uh, there we are. Start shopping. Click and collect or return an item. So let's demo start shopping that was uh, presented on the video that I ran uh, before. Start shopping. And you see we've got on the left, yes, by the way, I didn't mention, but when we start the application, Pepper uh, right away say, say hello, I'm Pepper. Can I, I can help you pick your, pick your green shoes, pick up your online order, return an item, what would you like to do? So you can do it by voice or clicking on the tablet. Uh, then when I choose uh, shop, uh, shop an item, uh, I can help you, help you choosing your dream shoes, picking up uh, your online order or return an item. So different products are presented. You can uh, type in your choice here. So let's say you want uh, 
men's uh, dress shoes. I want men dress shoes. And you have, um, and it displays the new type of shoes and you can customize them. So you can uh, choose customize or click on customize or type, I want to customize my shoes. But I click now, customize, and here you got the different choices. You can choose over the color or over the size. Uh, you can make a, um, a ask to to change it within the same sentence. I want. Let's type it. I want red shoes, and my size is forty-five. Here we are. We got the shoe in red, and with the size forty-five. Then you can go on, proceed to, what, would you hear uh, the robot uh, confirms the color and size and propose to buy them. Say yes. Perfect, they propose the socks. Then again, yes, for instance. And here you've got um, the, he proposed uh, in the video to go to the desk so there is the, the text here on the, that the, the robot uh, says, and it displays this map, and then you just follow uh, to, the, um, to the desk to pick up your shoes uh, or to pay them. Then finish. And you've got this um, evaluation, the feedback. You can uh, choose to say it by voice or uh, click on it. On the screen, when you have uh, words with double quotes, like start shopping, double quoted, or there you see the words woman, double quote, men, double quote, it's um, an indication of uh, a keyword that you can use. Of course, we can enrich this uh, using um, different words uh, to, to cover the, the most uh, situations that the, the, the customer may uh, use to speak about the shoes or the, the, the process of buying them. That's what I'm going to show you now. Now let's go to the code. Um, in the, well, this app is a pretty, pretty rich. There are many classes and files. So it's, it's there you have been using activities with just a main activity file. So you'll see there are plenty of them here, but we're not going to go through that. I'm just going to show you the um, topic part. The topics, as you may remember, are located in res row folder. That's where you should uh, find your topic file. Here there are se several topics because you have plenty of situations. Each screen has a different, uh, vocal interaction so they are split in several topics there i'm going to show you the concepts and the products the concepts are declared in a separate file but it's the same as you've seen in the previous topics that were introduced by luca in the previous uh, sessions um, there you've got a, a yes concept a no concept and you will define in the yes concept all the different ways to give a positive answer. Yes, yeah, indeed, yep, affirmative. Uh, same for hello, for some numbers. Some patterns like I want to, it can match on want, I want, I want to, want to, I would like to, etc. And this concept will be used in the, in the, in the dialogue rules that I present in the second topic, the product.top. There you are. There you have um, uh, the rules to match on over the, the product selection. There, let's have a look at this one, on line eight. 
uh, it's just to give you an idea of how uh, rich or how complex a rule can be to match over the, the most uh, situations. There we use the I want to concept, till I want to, that was declared on the concepts dot dot file. This is optional with the curly brackets. So you could say I want. Then we have another optional word uh, pattern that is here. It could be them or it. So you could say I want it or I want them. Then in optional two color and then the keyword for the color, the con uh, concept for the color. The colors concept is declared here, black, gray, red, tan. So you can say, I, I want them in color blue, or you can say simply blue. It will match on this. And you have also the second part, and my size is or in. So you can split this my size or in. You see with the square brackets, it means it's either the first one or the other one. And again, it's optional with, um, uh, with the curly brackets around the, this pattern. Again, an optional size, and then the size, which is a number between 35 and 46. Okay. Um, based on the match of this pattern, we'll instantiate variables that have been introduced in the session before by Luca. Here we have a, a variable color and a second variable size. And it will be, um, uh, the value will be assigned here, color equal dollar one. Dollar one stands for this match over uh, this concept. If I say blue and 42, for blue will match on uh, this color. It's part of the oh, blue. I don't have blue. Sorry, uh, red. Let's say red, red and forty-two. Forty-two will be put. Uh, uh, red will be put in the variable dollar one, and then when we it will be assigned to the variable color, and the forty-two will be assigned to the variable size, and it's accessible through code through this uh, function that will be detailed uh, later on, but this will send this code to the, to the, the, the Java code. And the rest of the line will be what the robot says. It will say, all right, here they are in color. Let me just put it in the second line. Here they are in red and size 42 would like to buy them when the, this was the sentence that appeared here uh, if they are in red and size 45 would you like to buy them okay so that's it that's um what uh, i wanted to to show through this uh, presentation um to show how the the sentences will uh, the, the rules will be matched on how complex they can be and to give you uh, information on how it works uh, this uh, is available this um, app is available uh, through github though so we have a, a slide with the do we have the the link in the slides i guess uh, 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 we didn't put it, we'll share it afterwards. It's available on GitHub of SoftBank. You can download it and um, make it work on the emulator, but there will be some, maybe some adaptation. Not all the features work with the version that is on GitHub currently, um, but uh, partially it works. But you can have a look at uh, these topics to, to take um, insight over uh, using it. I was afraid that's all for me. Right, thanks, Luis. So thanks, Luis, and thanks, Mimil, for, for the additional information. Uh, so I hope like um, everyone has quite a good idea on how to make Pepper as a chatbot with Embody. All right, so, um, okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, okay, so this one. 
Okay, right. So um, you, you have some idea, like just now, I think like Louis showed a very nice um, interface that, that we, we can actually um, communicating with Pepper, you can have not just word, not just chat, but also you have uh, interactive in terms of gesture, in terms of um, the hand movement, uh, the head movement, the body movement, and also a very media rich um, uh, tablet in front that you can do additional interaction with the, with the user. So I hope um, everyone can look at all this detail, uh, especially how all these uh, tools can actually enhance the communication. And this communication is not just communication, but it is a good service providing method, uh, especially when we want to design for certain uh, service robot application. So particularly, for example, uh, I can now easily think that we can convert all these things into something that we can put uh, to become like a receptionist, for example, robot receptionist, which is in one of the tasks in Rules 2020 is uh, about receptionist. So how to actually make Pepper able to interact with a customer and to provide uh, value-added uh, services. So that is something that you, 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 you can um, use your creativity to put in and also to realize all this idea with uh, your development. Uh, using just the Android Studio that you have in your email laptops. And you can try to use the emulator like just now what uh, Luis have shown you. And also the, the, the chatbot. And also we actually have a, a simulator, which is the virtual pepper that can show you how is the movement. So we can even design very nice gesture to match with uh, the, the content that the robot is going to say. So that will definitely uh, a plus point, I can say to make the whole interaction more lively and more uh, human feel. Okay, so um, I guess like Luis later you will show, uh, you will share the, the source. Um, we will try to put it uh, in the form that we can share to the community later on. Okay, and also uh, Mimo have uh, introduced uh, Didio. Right, this are uh, all the repository that you can refer to. Okay, and for the, uh, for the assignment, so assignment three, so uh, continue from the development, um, I mean last week development, so you can use uh, the GitHub Classroom assignment. So I hope uh, now by now you have uh, uh, corresponded with um, Luca about this uh, GitHub Classroom assignment. So I hope you have figured out uh, how you can use this um, GitHub Classroom to submit your assignment. And you can add features, for example, like just now what I said, the dialogue, uh, not just the dialogue, but also the action, the GUI element, and so on. That's what um, Louis have shown you in the shoe retail example. Okay, and yeah, lastly is how you want to submit your code. Uh, so you can, you can use this, I think email share this um, uh, guide, like how you can push your code to uh, the GitHub in order for your submission. But if just in case that you're not familiar with GitHub and you prefer like, uh, you want to submit by files or by email and anything, please communicate with us, okay? Please send us, you know, or please contact us in, in any way. You can even use our Facebook group uh, to communicate with uh, us, uh, committee member, and also like with me in particular. I, I check it almost every day. So, um, yeah, we will, we will discuss with you like how you can, you can do the submission. But um, we, will, we will prefer you to follow the way that we have uh, written on the website and also... Uh, when uh, that we explain over here, okay, right. So next week we will have this um, advanced programming. Uh, we will have uh, some additional examples uh, that that Luca will, will going to show you, uh, and also uh, I will take about like sometimes for the second half of next class to tell you more about the detail of the competition, like exactly where you submit, what you submit, uh, what is the timeline, and so on. Just now I give a, quite a brief uh, introduction on all the uh, uh, competition stuff. So next week I'll give you a little bit more detail like with slides and, and some, some writing so that you know exactly how to prepare for your competition after the last class. So that you can focus on your development starting from next week until the, the early of June, which is about half a month ago. Okay, so I've come to the end of uh, uh, our content today. So if... Um, and any things that you would like to add, Luis, and also uh, email? I saw Luis share the GitHub link uh, in the group chat. Yeah, so later on, I can add this into the class materials later on in, in, in the slide so that you can refer as well. Okay. 
Okay, right. So since you have nothing, so I'll do the final announcement uh, before I end the session. So the first thing is, again, please um, sign up for the online entry form for the competition. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, I've sent out the link for the attendance today. So please also uh, fill up the attendance list so that I know, so that we, we have the statistics like who attended which class. Uh, easier for us to plan for the next class. And also I have sent out, um, I have posted the, a link to a, to a survey form, right, to get your feedback regarding um, our classes and so on in order for us to uh, organize a new series that is going to happen very soon after this, right? So after this, after we finish this class, uh, we, have the we have the challenge, then yeah, along the way, we will start a new series. So uh, in order for us to prepare, um, uh, the class in a more suitable timing and also in a more uh, appropriate uh, arrangement. For example, uh, the materials, how, how we deliver the materials and also the topics that uh, you might want to know more. So in order to get all this feedback, so please fill in uh, the survey form that I put, that I post the link in the group chat just now. So I'll put it after this again. Uh, please give us the feedback so that we can do it better. Right. Then lastly, if you have any question, you can post on the group chat or you can like, yeah, communicate with us. And I would like to thank everyone, uh, especially um, Luca. Uh, Luca is currently busy with uh, other appointments. And also engineers from um, SoftBank, uh, Emil and Luis and, and the rest of you. Uh, and also I would like to say thanks to all the participants today uh, for your support and also for your attendance uh, to, to keep this uh, session uh, enjoyable. <laughs> okay, right. And um, so with that, I would like to say thanks and I would like to end this session. So see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.